The village was high up in the mountains. So high it felt like it was always cold. That kind of cold that wears you out. I always feel like you're on the verge of shivering, so your body's always tense. The whole village was like that, braced against each other, through layers of clothes, through layers of life. Above the village, on one peak, lived this gentle flame. So gentle, if you touched it, it wouldn't even burn you. But yet it will warm you. And on the other peak, lived a gentle breeze. That kind of breeze that goes through your whole body. They had been watching what was happening in the village for a long time. Flame was like, if I could just get down there, I could warm them. The breeze was like, I could go to them, but what would I have to bring? One day they got together, and as it came to them both, I could ride you down. We could go down there together. The next morning, that's what they would do. The people were in their usual braced way, but something came through, and it stopped them in their tracks. They knew something had just passed through, and they knew that it felt good. And they took it in. And with each breath, they would gather the flame, breathe it into each other. And it was like a gift. It's like the deepest gift you have to give. People were warm were never called again. You know how you play the game where you roll your dice and you guy goes two forward and one back and then maybe you get lucky and this and that and you go round and round and round and, and finally you reach home base. Where you go, ah. But then you go on to the next game. But what if you just stayed there and never left? What would that be? We end up putting on all these layers of skin, layers of denial about who we are, and we have to find places where we can peel off the layers. I can't imagine what's more important than learning how to be ourselves. A lot of little boys want to play with dolls and they're told, nope, that's a girl's thing. A little girl might want to dress up in all dark blue and wear a baseball hat or something and be told, no, 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 you'll look so good in this frilly dress. But look at me, Dad, I've grown up and I'm a big girl. She's a big girl, she's a big girl. She's a big girl, she's a big girl. She's a big How people can continue to live in this picture of the world where sex is just like one or two ways, I don't know. Because the more we find about about each other, we realize that there is so many bizarre things going on out there that you cannot begin to imagine. I heard that it was a lot of drag queens in the middle of the woods. It was a ramshackle old homestead and that people made their own wine, cut their own firewood, and cobbled together their lives from this rural area. Nothing could have prepared me at all from the first minutes walking around in the front. And I thought I had seen a lot from being in New York and being in San Francisco and living in Philly, but really it blew my mind.
just seeing the various forms of gender expression. Ida was the first place I put on a dress since I was five. And it's because there were hundreds to choose from, you know, it was, <laughs> they were all moldy, but they were, you know, very glamorous anyway. Ida is part of this much larger gayberhood. There's about a hundred queers living in the backwoods of Tennessee in this area. We got creeks and we got ridges. We got boys who don't wear britches. And our home in Homo Holler, Homo Holler, Tennessee. Queers have more obstacles to creating community. We first have to learn how to face a world that can be really brutal to us. Which outfit do you think would sell more insurance? Uh, not to be uh, personal, but I fucking buy a dog shirt. Oh no, <laughs> I have a good deal for you. A lot of us create walls of protection around us. We have to learn how to trust that it's okay to let these walls down. It's about creating a community that has radical notions of supporting people with different bodies and giving everyone a real sense of ownership over land. And not just consider it as having it, but uh, increase a notion of stewardship. There's dozens and dozens of people whose hands have touched the soil and nurtured these plants. I garden 12 months of the year. I like to garden in blizzards. There's a natural buzz I get out of picking lettuce or arugula or broccoli in the dead of winter and eating it, and it's so sweet. It just electrifies my body. From a really young age, I had this sense that I was some kind of sissy nature boy. I love helping other people get turned on to eating fresh foods. We buy food together, we cook together, we eat together. I think food is an adventure. In a fast food nation, food has become more of an alienated individual experience for a lot of people. Food can bring people together. So much of communication is virtual. People learn to use technological tools sometimes as a replacement for communicating directly how to deal with our frustrations with each other and our differences. Things fester here if they don't get talked about, and it takes a really long time to clean up after that. When there's bad vibes and upset feelings, I get totally disillusioned and worry about how we're ever going to make it. There can be people who, in many other ways, can really embrace the place. They end up finding that they have to leave because the kitchen's too messy. Our environments are more chaotic, but we wouldn't have it any other way. It encourages people to find their contribution, not because of a quota, without being told what to do or being paid, but because they want to, and they want to because they want to support the people they're living with. We have made it through some like pretty hard times. We're going to figure it out as a community, and we always do. We have such an extended family that reaches so far. People all over are like stepping up and doing amazing things for this land. We're like a little part of the octopus, and then. I can hear them buzzing. A lot of times people arrive with a tightened and guarded body. How the hell can a person go to work? After some period of time, they're definitely a lot more relaxed. 
but we try really hard not to fall into a hierarchical power structure. Sometimes people fall into natural roles. I sometimes feel like I can't contain the Jewish mother within me. I hope that comes across in a very loving, giving, nourishing way, and not a smothering, controlling way. Oh, it is in a toasted. It is in toasted English muffin with butter, and I brought you each a piece of cake. You uh, are the sweetest ever. Oh, look. Queer has a lot to do with challenging dominant conceptions and dominant constructions of what people should be and how they should be. I have been out working on construction projects and have had the strange visitor who has never been here before hear them walk by and say, was that a girl? You know, and of course, you know, whoever happens to be around is like, first, don't assume it's a girl. Second, girls are carpenters too. Third, do the dishes. <laughs> you know, like, you know. Queer gender expression kind of just wants to kick those notions in the teeth. Encouraging people to live in their form whatever form they take. And it's fine to change it, to make it more like the body you want. Oh my God, thank God that I'm gay. Thank God that I'm queer. Because if I were straight, I would be getting married, having kids, getting a job, and my life would just be so much more ordained and so much more patterned by culture. The gay assimilationist attitude they essentially want to be perceived as not different from straight people. Fuck that, you know? It's like, why would you want to throw away, you know, this, this opportunity you have to step outside the bounds and design your own life and just do the same thing? These people, you know, you'll celebrate your difference. Step away from the mainstream culture and celebrate your difference. Oh my god, here's a whole bunch of people that I can play with. And I don't have to worry about these questions and these attitudes that may be coming at me. You know, here's people that get it. We're living in the freaking rural south, honey. Oh my god, welcome to Tennessee. The thunder rolls. The thunder Ida being staged in this ultra-conservative right-wing area, the stronger bonds we build with them, the more accepting they are of people who look really different and act really different. I'm in my fifth year of working at a local greenhouse. I'm openly gay there, and they're extremely supportive of me. They're really curious. They came out to visit Ida and they said they wanted to see our plants, but I always kind of thought, mm, they sort of want to see how the queer freaks live in the woods. Max and his cohorts are, um, how should I say this? A new experience for me. <laughs> now what? No, yeah, you're funny. I'm straight and I've been raised in the Bible Belt. I know what it says in the Bible, but that is between you and God. And what is, and my life is between me and God. And I think that if people would not try to meddle in everybody else's business all the time, that maybe things wouldn't be so complicated. The main thing I don't like about Ida is they have outdoor toilets. I wish Max would put it in a bathroom. <laughs> Everybody's always been nice, and I have no reason not to be nice back. That's the way that you 
battle it, you know? It's like knowing your neighbors. How's your daddy doing? He's okay. Uh, Not just living here in a bubble and pretending that nothing exists around you, because it does, you know? And therefore, you must respect it. Most of all, I want to thank the one who has ultimately given me the motivation, time, and resources to write this book, and the one to whom it is committed. Jesus Christ, my creator, my savior, and my treasure forever. Ah, it's a Jesus tree book. We get to know each other best here by working together. A lot of queers, maybe they were too fey or too butch as a young kid to really get much attention over learning the things that they wanted to learn. And they can come to a place like Ida that just has this wild array of skills and pick up something new. When I first came to Ida, I brought all my tools with me. I was determined to fix something. I spent more time learning about how much I didn't know about how to live in the country. It's a lot of work all the time, every day, so you might as well have a great time at it. You see the excitement in someone's eyes of trying something that they've been intimidated by. A lot of people move to rural environments with a very romanticized view of like homesteading and cooking food and growing food and chopping wood and then sometimes run into walls because we learn that some of the work is really hard. Seeing people learning to chainsaw wood and learning carpentry and then eating foods they've never eaten and hanging out by a bonfire at night watching the stars and all this can happen in one day. Sometimes people's face light up and go, wow, thank you so much. I've never had a day like this before in my life. Living rurally does make it a little bit easier to slow down and listen to what's going on. You know you're gaining a different kind of awareness. My night vision changing, basic senses begin to shift. Cycles of birds and bugs. It's an amazingly comforting rhythm. From the smallest little bitty things up to the deer that might eat the garden. I don't even really think about what the plants need. I just wake up and start feeling it in my bones. It's often hard for me to see how what we're doing connects with the rest of the world. Our day-to-day -day lives can be so mundane. You know, we wake up, we eat, we drink coffee or tea, play games, we play music, we make art, we go to sleep. I talk to activists that come here, and almost always the answer I get is that Ida is a little beacon of hope. Stay so soon to strive to disappear where I enjoy kind of divide activism into the people who go out and chant and hold signs and the people who model a way of living. We're able to demonstrate that you can live comfortably and happily consuming so much fewer resources. We create our wealth and our happiness from our interrelations with each other. It's great, but it's got problems. If we create too much of a romanticized vision of what Ida is, it might make it harder for us to deal with making it what we really want it to be. If we want the greater society to change, we need to figure out how to work on ourselves. This space changes a lot of people's lives. 
it changed mine, you know. <laughs> it changed everyone who lives here. Oh, the melody will deem the tongue to sparse the words. They're all finding solidarity with each other. And I think that that is queer. Following the many trails meant to veil the sudden turns. Historically, lesbians hung out with lesbians, and gay men hung out with gay men, and I think queer is just like opening its arms to everybody. All on the chance of a cake at worse. Then this. Don't put me in a box and tell me I can only hang out with those crayons. You know? Queer is taking the whole box of crayons and then putting it on the damn stove and it melts. Like for real. As queer people make their alliances in the world, defuse fears, and step more easily, they're changing the larger culture. And they're making the larger culture an easier place for everyone who wants to self-direct their life experience, including people who may not be queer-identified. We need less divisive movements. Radical movements are really good at tearing each other apart and becoming increasingly small cells. Sometimes on bad days, I feel as though we're losing. I feel as though the thinkers and the feelers and the lovers of the planet, we're, we're losing. We can't continue to shove other people into poverty. We can't continue to poison everything we eat and drink. And we really do need some larger umbrellas for organizing. Our work here is at least laying some groundwork for having a strong enough network, a well-organized enough network, a skilled enough network to actually come together. Track the blood, track the embers, chasing memories, post, post. Times when neither strength nor the will to carry on. Never home, so you'll go to leave well enough alone. Darkness don't grow, or religious lends itself to whatever you are. You trump so loud, but it was your home. You can never read a story, you have to tell it. Because each time you tell it, it makes it alive. And when all the stories have left me, my leaves turn and fall and get ready for the next stories to come.